And we are live from Satellite 5, beautiful palatial studio. It's Brian Sochin, my main man, my brother from another mother, my twin brother, Rob. What's up, buddy? Are oh, you looking good today? You looking fly? Got your little collared shirt on? Yeah, man. Dressed up for the show. A little bit. Yeah, I just got the Macho Man on. They're all making fun of me for wearing a pro wrestling shirt. I love that shirt, man. Ooh, I yeah. love the Macho Man. Snap into, he's the king. When he's the king, snap into a Slim Jim. King Listen, of the ring, right? Yeah, he was. He, he, he might, I'm, you're going to take me on the wrestling road. Don't, I'm gonna, yeah, but I'm he was a former pro road. baseball player, too. A lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, look it up. So we've got a lot of good stuff we're going to talk about today, all these notes. Uh, we have a new fighter signing, undefeated bare-knuckle fighter coming in. We're going to talk who that is and about that person. We have Fight Night New York 2 to talk about, which is going to feature, of course, that bantamweight championship title fight with Johnny Bedford, and uh, he's the champ, of course, versus Jared Grant. And there's a lot of interesting stuff to do, talk mm -hmm. about that because, you know, Jared's a young guy. He's 4-0, so we're going to get into talking about that. Uh, also, um, I think it's the hardest challenge of his career, Jared. I think so. But... That's where we're at. We're going to talk about that. And then we also have, there's so much stuff. Knuckle Mania 2, tickets on sale from for Hollywood from the Hard Rock Casino. Knuckle Mania 2, or, <clears throat> excuse me, hold on. <clears throat> Let me do it correctly. <clears throat> Knuckle Mania 2. <laughs> I can't do it. I have to warm my voice up. I but love it. It's going to be awesome. And then we have two special guests on the show today coming up ahead of Jackson, which we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be Elvin El Bandito Brito. And we're going to have the Lionheart himself come in, Caleb Harris, uh, a fight ahead of their big fight for the title. A rematch. So there's a lot. Yeah, a rematch. There's a lot mm -hmm. I want to get into talking to both of them. Elvin will come mm -hmm. on first, then we'll have Caleb come on as well. Uh, there's Elvin. <laughs> there's a close up. It's, it's like, wait, <laughs> yeah, who sized this, Extreme man? Close <laughs> Extreme close up. Extreme um, close up. But yeah, it's going to be fun because uh, I want to see where their heads are at headed into the second mm -hmm. time they've met. Uh, I want to see if it's changed from the first time. And just, I want to check out their training because Elvis is doing some very interesting stuff in Puerto Rico that I've seen. So we're going to talk to him about that. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Excited. You're excited too. I know you're excited I to be excited, here, Rob. excited, man. Um, I know that Elvin, like I said, he'll be on first. I think he's coming on at 12.15, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you have a lot to get into with him as well. So that should be fun. Now, other than that, I guess we should start, start, I can't speak today. Wow. I guess we should start talking. It's the snow. It's it, the Northeast snow. I know. The snow that scared me in the way. And I got to drink this. Hold on. No, I'm good. <laughs> so what we're going to do is talk, we're going to talk about the trending topics. And the first one is something I know you wanted to bring up mm -hmm. with the trending topics. Let's talk about that. So we are getting right into it. So Francis Nagano. Yep. And this, so, all right. So let's, let's, I guess let's set the table as they say. Please. The kids say. Please. Is pay, pay, pay. Everybody wants more money, right? Who's on so, the take, man? Yeah, Francis Nagano. He's fighting this Saturday UFC Heavyweight Championship. Yep. Right? But what has overshadowed his match with, I believe his name is Cyril Gagne. I, I'm I, the worst I, with I, names. I butcher I can, his first. I can barely Cyril say it. I think Gon. So, okay, Cyril Gagne. I think Smith 0. is Smythe. I'm not yeah. good with names. Go ahead. Dude's 10 and 0, <laughs> savage. I think it's going to be a great fight. You yeah. know, I love watching combat sports. 10 and 0, man. It's a big record. But what's really in the news is the pay issue and oh, i guess his contract francis's contract's up after this fight and he said i'm not fighting for 500 to 600 thousand dollars anymore that's that's gone i don't know if a true number has been you know put out 500 there 500 to 600 but the gypsy king himself has chimed in and has agreed to fight him how much i don't know numbers haven't been thrown around but that seems to be the thing. That seems to be the popular thing that fighters are now getting into the boxing game. And that's where the real money is, yeah. or at least for these super fights or these featured fights. Um, is that what people want to say? Well, it seems to, I, I mean, I, the, to answer you right all off, the time. <clears throat> well, that's what we talked about. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. That's what is we Christmas, talked about. Christmas, Christmas, if Christmas that's, comes once that's a week. That's what we talked about about a year ago when <laughs> mm -hmm. all this started with Triller and, and the Jake Paul stuff. Yep. I had made the prediction. It hasn't happened yet. Maybe we're seeing this. It'll start. But I feel like at some point, fight fans, they think they're going to get tired of it. But the more I look at it, 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 they're not, they don't care so much about all have the fight fans. They want the mainstream mm -hmm. audience in. So does the mainstream audience get tired of it? And in a social media world we live in, I, I don't know if they do. I don't. I don't, well, I don't even get tired of it. It's yeah. not going to show. Well, I guess it, this gets back to the age old, you know, who would win in a fight, a wrestler, a boxer. And that's what started UFC. And then it's like, okay, well, this is the best fighters, right? The most well-rounded, the closest thing you can get to a true street fight. If it yep. were hit the ground, use elbows, use almost any weapon aside from, you know, grabbing somebody's junk and uh, ripping it out. But Aside from well, that. Why would your mind go to grabbing somebody's junk? No, they had that like they had that in the beginning of UFC, dude. One guy was just nailing his stuff, man. Like I a mean, punching like, bag. Like, he's dude, he was just <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, man, this is brutal stuff. <laughs> but that's that, that was the early days of uh, UFC. It was crazy. Who, who is the best fighter in the world? Yeah. 
And then it's like, well, a boxer will never be able to wrestle. They'll get owned all day. But now we're back. They back said a good wrestler always beats a good boxer. So, but if if you know if the evolution is well, grappling, wrestling, striking is the truest form of combat, and that deems to be the best fighter in the world. Now we want to figure out who the best boxer is. Are we going backwards? Or I, is I don't just... know. I think you're putting a lot of thought into this, which mm -hmm. is smart. That's what normal people do. Can critically think and stuff like that. But 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 <laughs> it's not common. I in know. Today's... I know. We're not allowed to do that. But <laughs> <Yeah>. listen. <laughs> Oh shit! I forgot my mask. Let me put my mask. On. All right. Now, so, so listen. I think that super fights are not something new. Mm -hmm. I mean, we they, we just didn't see as many of them. Like even growing up, even before I was around, you saw Muhammad Ali had a super. Muhammad Ali fought uh, Antonio Inoki, a pro wrestler in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Muhammad That's Ali right. fought Gorilla Monsoon. Like he was making his money doing these celebrity fights too. I guess it wasn't as done on the internet. We didn't see as much. Though, right? They were more spectacle. Spectacle. It's a spectacle, me, a but in of a see the difference is. Show. Well, that would be more like Gorilla Monsoon versus that might have been in Puerto Rico versus Muhammad Ali, but in Japan. Uh, pro wrestling is seen as a legitimate sport. It's more hard hitting. It's more it real. So they marketed it as a shoot. And I can't remember the story. I'm gonna have to do research on it for next week. Okay. But I believe Muhammad Ali was afraid. Did he double cross? I think Muhammad Ali might even fought Andre the Giant in Japan. But it, it, there's there's always reality to that in Japan more than it would be in America, if that makes sense. Well, not not to go out of left field really fast, but from my understanding, in the early days of wrestling those that wanted to get into it actually got hurt. Like wrestlers were time. hurt. They, sometimes it's still guys do to, that. To let guys know that this isn't a joke. This is what we do for a living. Yep. And if you try to come in and, you know. It was like a magician not showing you the secrets. They didn't want to show you right away and let you know this is, it's like you got beat in like a gang. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, uh, again, not to go down the pro wrestling hole, but if you look at it when it started back in the day, I'm talking about the 1800s, 1900s, it was real. And then the matches would be so long and boring, people got tired of it. So then these guys mm. started working together and said, let's make this match a little better. And if I let you beat me, we'll make more money in the rematch. There's a great book called uh, The Fall Guys. Read it. That's the best thing you could read about how wrestling developed into what it is today. From what it, it used to be very real. Mm -hmm. The Gold Dust Trio got involved. I'm going to go down the, the wrestling hole. Let's not do that. Who cares? <laughs> That's Evan. That's Evan. <laughs> but all, this plays, all this plays a role in where we're at now with combat sports. Yep. Are we in a place where we want to see these super fights? Or do we want to see, you know, who's the best in UFC? Come to the UFC and fight. But the problem is we've seen that. We've seen James Tony say, ah, oh, I could beat someone. And he got owned by yep. Randy Couture. Yep. And absolutely demolished. But then again, you put Randy Couture in a boxing match, James Tony's going to run Kill circles. Yeah. So Every it's, a day. It, it's a different... It's but don't you arts. think well, how long till people realize the fact that when you put a when you do that you can almost see the clear I mean you can be shocked all the time in fighting mm -hmm. but you can almost see who the clear winner is going to be but people still pay for it it's like me and you have said we're not going to watch that mm -hmm. and then we both call and talk about how we're interested and we, we did check it out because you're looking they're selling the spectacle and then we fall into it it's like bought the hype man and that but they're doing a good job so kudos to them if that's what they're doing yeah that's where I look at it so I mean that's where we're at with that. Um, let's see. Which let's talk about heavyweight super fights. We're talking about heavyweight super fights. We got Arnold Adams, right? Yeah. Who would be his heavyweight super fight? Bumaye, the boogeyman. Dude, I I think him. I, I would see him and Wilder. I would like to see that fight. That was it. Was the first one that came to my head too, actually, because I think they're a little bit closer. You know, a little bit closer in weight. I wouldn't like to see him go up against like a you know a super super heavyweight, meaning like two fifty, two sixty. Someone's got like 30, 40 pounds on him. I think that would be a uh, that would be a struggle. Yeah, it's not as that's yeah. not as evenly matched, and mm -hmm. I agree. I think uh, Wilder that that would be the one. That's the first one that came to my yeah. head. And you know, we should um, um, remind you to drop it in the chat. If you're watching this right now, live on YouTube, I don't know where you're watching or maybe you're listening on the BKFC show on Spotify later on. That's what we're talking about. When we say the chat YouTube, who would you like to see? Or screaming out loud. If you're listening in your car, Adams versus who <laughs> roll down your screaming window, out loud. Scream, yeah. Roll down your window and scream at the or guy. If you're next listening to, you. to this in the line at, at the grocery store, <laughs> you're sitting there in your cubicle. Sir, do you have any work. coupons? That's right. You got, you got your headphones in. Just, Adams versus Fury <laughs> all day, baby. <laughs> and then you'll be escorted out. You'll look for a job for the BKFC podcast. That's right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, that was the, I hate to like, your pick as well. That, that was the one I was thinking I like of. It. Yeah, man, it's a good fight. I mean, even, what about of mm -hmm. all time? Who would you like to see him fight heavyweight wise? All time, yeah, anybody heavyweight? that might be alive, can be dead, can be retired, whatever. Hmm. That's hard because I don't even have That's one. That's a for tough that. one. That man. is a hard one. Hap, hit us in the chat. Let us know. We always like see what you think. One. I don't know. Do we? Are you monitoring the chat today? Uh, I am not. I can. Yeah, DC's sure. not here. I don't know what we right. do without He's him. He's in uh, the Sunshine State. Yeah, we're in the snow state right now. Yeah. So we have. El Bandito coming on in just a couple minutes. Going to talk to him ahead of Jackson, Mississippi. We're going to be live at the Jackson Convention Center January 29th. BKFC.com. He'll be fighting 
Caleb Harris, the Lionheart. And uh, I, I'm excited to talk to Elvin because, and, and we'll explore this, in, explore this in the interview, but he's got, I think, the highest fight IQ of any bare-knuckle fighter I've ever met. We've talked. I want to talk about that. Agree, 100%. <laughs> And more so, a lot of fighters are coming down to Puerto Rico to train. Most, most notably, notably blah, 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 I can't we're even say that word, whatever today. that word is. Notably. Yeah, that's right. That one. <laughs> we're drunk today. Man. <laughs> Lorenzo Hunt and his win training with him. Yep. There's a lot we'll have to talk about. And there's that. other people. They have a name for it and all. And I'm excited to talk to him. Let's bring him in. He's in our virtual green room live on Satellite 5. My man, your man, my boy, your boy. There he is in beautiful Puerto Rico. Yeah, what's up? Elvin, Elvin, what's up, buddy? Rito. How you doing? Elvin Rito. What's going on, dude? Good, man. Just uh, trying to relax a little bit. You know, I've been working real hard, so I need to take a break so we take the bring about the kids out here to the beach. That's I awesome. The, the That's awesome. Well, let's talk, here, about how, let's talk about how hard you're working. We were just uh, exploring this before you came on. You have what you're calling Champ Camp or the Gold Rush Camp in Puerto Rico. Now, normally, yeah. people come to train with you, I see, in Puerto Rico. We just said you have the highest fight IQ of any bare knuckle fighter, so that's why they're coming to train with you. And now you're training with a who's who of bare knuckle at this point. Who was down there with you training? For this one, uh, I mean, I had Joey, Joey and Britton Beltran and uh, Lorenzo Hunt, and I had a couple amateurs out here helping me out, too. Um, but we just, you know, it was an awesome team of champions and future champions to work with. So it's been an awesome experience. Just us all pushing each other, you know, championship mentality. You got a whole bunch of competitive guys in the room. Everybody's going to always try to be the number one. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a who's who of bare knuckle. Are they the waves I hear in the background crashing? Yeah. yeah. I kind of, look, you would beat me up, but I kind of want to punch you for that. Cause we got snow outside where we're at. You're lucky. Good for you in Puerto Rico. <laughs> So yeah, I'm out here in my tank top, relaxing. <laughs> Don't rub it in, dude. Would you say this is the best camp you've had yet as a fighter? I feel like this is such a strong camp for you. For bare knuckle, yeah, it is. And, you know, and again, like I have been saying this whole training camp, there's, there's a part of fighting that you can't measure. You know, mm -hmm. you can measure strength, speed, and all, all all these different things. But like, you know, the timing and the IQ and, and the way that you execute the fight, you can't measure that. It, it comes from the inside. So it's been a real awesome experience building up to it. It's really been like a four month training camp. Yeah. Uh, it's been awesome building up to it. Um, and just getting my mind and my body on the same level. Uh, the highest level. Yeah, and, and it's exciting to watch what's going to happen. I do believe it's been a long training. I feel like you're a guy that loves training. You seem to really enjoy it. So this fight, the second time you two are meeting, number two, uh, I, I wonder, uh, to my estimation, it seems like you're both, you've had more fights than you, but you're different fighters. I mean, what were you, one and two last time when you guys met? You're a completely different man and fighter now. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. I was one and two back then. I'm now I'm four and two. Um, and and he, he's grown two as a fighter. We're both grown. Um, you know, I, I plan on staying ahead of Caleb the whole time. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, what his game plan is coming into this fight. So it also seems like, at least to me, that you're a fighter that loves fighting. Now, everyone loves money. It's a business. You want to make money. But I see. I feel like with you, it's not all about the money. It's about the championship. It's about the legacy. Is that fair to say? Yeah, you know, I think at first the allure of the money is what brought me into bare knuckle, but it's, you know, the passion, the heart, it takes a certain breed of fighter, and uh, the team and all the people we have, the circle, is fell in love with the sport, fell in love with the challenge of it and, and everything, and now we're doing it for more than just the money, and, and that's really what it takes to be a champion. You can't, if you're fighting for the money, it, it's going to be easier to lay down and give up, but if you have something you're going to fight for, you have not only a legacy, but plans and, 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 and things that you're trying to build and work it, that you want to have done. And this the path that we have to walk through. It's, it makes it even sweeter and easier to put it all in line, you know, for Now, you're a guy that loves Puerto Rico, living there, you know, having your camp there. Did you ever move a fight camp out of Puerto Rico, or have you always trained in Puerto Rico? Well, I, I moved. I did my first camp with Roy Jones Sr. Yeah. Well, I was, I was living out there in Gulf Breeze in the Pensacola area. Once I moved back to Puerto Rico, I did my first and my second fight with, with, with Boy Jones Sr. Uh, once I moved back to Puerto Rico, I've been here. I do my training camps here. You know, we try to get 
we've been blessed that we always have the good and great people around us and we've been building a community of, of, of some of the baddest guys around helping each other and pushing each other to, to the next level uh, I really don't have to go anywhere I mean this is where people come to here yeah it's not a lot of places like this right now we've been trying to prepare out the middle of the winter as hard as we can we sweat man and, and getting out this food and it's just a certain flavor and spirit out here that you can't match that's what I was going to say. It seems like training in Puerto Rico has this unique, everywhere is unique when you train differently, but it seems like Puerto Rico is so unique. We've seen it on social media. Uh, it looks like you're doing something where you're butting heads with goats and stuff there. I, can you speak on what's going on with that? Is that? How's that going to help you beat Caleb, butting heads with goats? I mean, I can think, but how would you say? Well, he got to butt head with goats, you know? He's got to have a goat in front of him, hard head, tough chin. Um, so, you know, it's, we're, we're trying to be the greatest of all time. We're trying to be the best. We're all trying to be the best. I'm trying to be the best. I see if I found fighter. I plan on fighting. I want to find, fight more than everybody. And I want to, I want to be in this game as, uh, uh, as much as I can, physically can, and then move on to making a new breed of fighters the next generation. So, so I, I want to stay in this game forever. I love, I love fighting. Oh, is it just butting heads? Are you wrestling with goats? Like what's going on down there? Or, or where's Puerto Rico? Oh, that, that, yeah, well, my, I got goats. Everybody knows I got goats. So that, that's Pancho. That's one of my goats. That's one of my, my first goat I ever had. He's, he grew up to be a huge specimen. He doesn't have anybody else to play with and, and to head butt with, so I'm the only one that will challenge him. So we, uh, we just go head to head, and we, and we do a lot of back and forth. At first, it's the, we played it a little bit as a game, and it was hard for me to hold it because it's a big-ass goat pushing on your neck. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, now, man, I, I don't have to, I can just, I mean, I fight with him. We go back and forth, and he, he, he really has to take it serious. I mean, if he really wanted to hurt me, he could, but it's just a game that I've been playing with him since he was a baby, a kid. So and that's, now he's just a, a that's a, and yeah, that's a, yeah, road. he's huge. That's like a unique training that we love, and I love that you're hanging out with us today, and we're very excited for your fight January 29th in Jackson at uh, Fight Night Jackson, Mississippi at the Jackson Convention Center. You and Caleb Harris, BKFC.com, you can buy it, and I wish you the best of luck, man. I know it's for a title, so uh, thanks for coming on today, and thank you for making us jealous of the beach. I, I wish we could just hang up on you for that. Uh, no problem, man. <laughs> and, um, I can't wait to be there. I'll see you guys there, and uh, enjoy. It's going to be a hell of a main event. And we're coming all the way out there to make noise. I know you are, man. We're looking forward to that. Thanks for making time to come on. Go bake in the sun, relax, take a dip, and enjoy it, bro. Thank you. Thank you. There he goes. There goes El Bandito, yeah. live from Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. where I'm jealous. I heard the wind. I heard the waves. I think I just <clears throat> lost me. hearing in my ear. The whole time, yeah, all I heard was... Phenomenal <laughs> sound quality on that. That was great. <laughs> I, yeah, was, I was going to tell him whoever, to go like, hide somewhere. But. Yeah, whoever whoever booked him, uh, <laughs> we need to really have a discussion with that internally in BKFC. <laughs> Generally, we we ask the fighters, we ask the people that we're interviewing, go to a nice, you know, secluded area so we can hear you, you can hear us. There's no disturbances. Because honestly, I would have liked to ask him a plethora oh, of so more much more questions. we could have gotten to, but it was, yeah, yeah, we had a cut. Yeah. Who can we blame? Is that DC? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> yes. I Man, it's lucky he's in the Miami not right here, now. Yeah. That seems getting blamed. Yeah, well, that's catching gonna, the fire. I'm looking forward to the fight. I am. And, and it's even, be a great even fight. with the, <laughs> it was still nice to talk to him mm -hmm. because. If the people didn't know that are watching the champ camp, I mean, he did iron sharpens iron and he's got all of them there with him. And and I think it's so interesting because he stays so sharp because he's training other fighters all yes. the time there. He just and loves the business of fighting. He loves yeah, it. And that's what I wanted to talk about is in the beginning, there wasn't this plethora of BKFC fighters training together, learning together, uh, exchanging, you know, what, what are you Notes. doing? What am I doing? Yeah. What's, you know, what have you noticed in what the ring? works? Now there is, there's this deep pool of BKFC fighters that are exchanging ideas, that are exchanging strategies. And it's going to be tough. And we, it's going to be a tough one because he went the distance with Caleb Harris. He did. And well, that that's interesting. And that's something I want to talk to Caleb about as mm -hmm. well, how he went the distance and what happened, how it's going to be differently this different this time when Caleb comes on in just a little bit. But I think we talked about this. Excuse me, Tiger mm -hmm. Lift. Sorry. We talked about this numerous times a while ago. We just haven't mm -hmm. said it. The cool thing about bare knuckles, it grows. Bare knuckle fighting championship is mm -hmm. that we see styles emerge. Much like the UFC, it was craziness at first. Then we start to slowly see styles emerge and see things that work and don't work. And then people bring things in. Yep. Elvin Brito is one of those people that is, you're going to see Elvin Brito's stamp on bare knuckle fighting 20 years from now. Absolutely. Because he's going to integrate his thoughts and they're great thoughts into the business so much. And other fighters he trains, you're going to see it. You might not even know you're seeing it, but you'll, Elvin Brito will always 
be in the business because he got on the ground floor and he's showing people all these techniques. I'm Have excited. you noticed that Elvin like never gets cut? Has he gotten cut once? I was going to say, he is one of the most elusive <laughs> fighters so and that's why I call him the magician. Yeah. This guy barely gets hit, and, or excuse me, barely gets hurt in there. And when he does get hit, he's rolling with the punches. His fight IQ is, is off it's the charts. Beautiful. It's off the charts. The first time I ever met Elvin, uh, I don't remember the event. I'm not good with mm -hmm. remembering things like that. But the first time I ever met him, he said to me, I saw him after the fight, and I said, man, did you even fight yet? And he goes, I still look pretty. Ha, 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 with that laugh that he does. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, great. he doesn't. He never looks like he was in a fight. Uh, and and he's always he always leaves it out there. So that'll be a good fight with him and Caleb Lionheart Harris. Look, you don't own the nickname Lionheart Harris for no reason. You got heart. So that's going to be good. Do you expect this fight to go the distance again? I kind of do. Hmm. I don't know. I, I honestly, I, w I would not, I would not bet on this. I would not bet on this because it seems like Elvin sometimes will go in if he feels like there's the opportunity to, you know, get the win. Mm -hmm. So he'll go in or he'll play the the elusive man. He's that's what's tough with fighting him. You don't know what you're going to know who you're getting. Exactly. <laughs> You know which one. You're either swinging for air or you're getting punched in the face. So <laughs> it's it's tough, man. That's an either way. You don't you want know. you don't want to fight. It's yeah. really really difficult. Well, why don't we live here at Satellite Five for the BKFC show? We have uh, his opponent in mm -hmm. the virtual waiting room, the virtual green room. Caleb Lionheart Harris is on with us. We're so glad you're joining us, Caleb. How you doing, man? You there? Oh, there he is. What's going on? I like your hat. I yeah, appreciate it, guys. Uh, what's going on? What's up, Caleb? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I uh, got up this morning, went and got my three miles in, sat in the sauna for a little bit, just been kind of chilling around the house, playing a little Pokemon before uh, I got to get ready to go <laughs> teach my kids class tonight. You're into Pokemon. I love it. I, I, I can't even speak on that. I know. What, is it Pokemon Go? I don't know. What do you play? No, nah, I don't play the Pokemon Go. Uh, I've been playing Pokemon since day one uh, with the original Pokemon Blue, and uh, it's, just, no <laughs> it's just been something that's part of my childhood I've never been able to let go of. That's awesome. I, I that think I just awesome. missed, you're probably younger than me, I just missed Pokemon. I, I know that there's a character named Ash, I believe. That's all I know about Pokemon, right? See? I'm yeah, studying that's, up. Yeah, uh, that's the protagonist of the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. All right, let's 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 talk about, uh, let's talk not Pokemon because I'll know nothing. Let's talk about your fight coming up. I'm excited for it. Rob's excited. The fans are excited. Uh, in pretty much your hometown, right? I mean, you're right there. That's yeah, huge. Man, it's, uh, it's been awesome uh, getting ready for this fight. Uh you know, I reached out to David Feldman back in, had to be November sometime. I'd have to look back at the messages. And I, I told him, I said, look, what do, we, what do you need from me to bring BKFC to Jackson? You know, I haven't fought in my hometown in over five years. You know I put on a show. You know if you put me as the co-main or main event, especially fighting for the title against Elvin, that I'm going to sell out. Um, all you need to do is tell me what you need, and I will get it for you. And uh, we talked about it a little bit. Um, I reached out. My manager reached out. They tried to get me a fight in December um, against Jordan Nash. Yeah. Uh, I had some things going on and honestly had my mind solely set on this 165-pound tournament. So wasn't really looking to fight an unranked guy right before that got started. Uh, and they told me that in January they'd be coming to Jackson. And I told my manager, let's just wait for Jackson. And then y'all saw how the Julian Lane thing played out. Yeah. So they hit me up with Elvin, and I said, let's do it um, as long as it's for the title. And I started pushing tickets. And so far, I think I've sold over $17,000 wow. worth of tickets. And uh, I've, I've, made, I've made proof that when I give you my word on something, I, I follow through. And uh, – I, I believe they had to add more tables to the show just so that that way they could sell more tickets. So, so, you know, that's, that's incredible. I mean, that people want to see the Lionheart. They do. You mentioned Julian Lane. I kind of want to go through the story of this fight. So let me rewind that for a minute. Originally it was you taking on Julian Lane and then we saw what happened, which led to Mike Perry versus Julian Lane at knuckle mania too. We saw that happen. Were you watching when that happened? How did you find out that fight had changed? So, uh, I don't know because, I mean, I've mentioned it a few times before on interviews. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people out there know it, though, but me and Bobby Taylor fought. Yeah. Uh, we're from not the same local area, but the same fighting circuit area. Um, me and him fought my third professional MMA fight to a split decision. Uh, it went my way, could have went either way. So since then, I mean, 
I've always kept up with Bobby. He's kind of kept up with me. We got into bare knuckle, um, or when he got into bare knuckle, I started keeping up with him more. And so I was watching the fights that night, getting ready to watch him and Martin Brown, since they're both originally Mississippi guys. And, uh, I'm watching the fights and I think I took a break or something from watching one of the fights to, to go do something. And, uh, I get a message from Brandon Lambert of all people. Cause I mean, me and him don't really talk much. Uh, and he said, Mike Perry and Julian Lane just got into a fight in the crowd. And I was like, what are you talking about? So I go and I look at it and it's all over Instagram. And, uh, I'm a little, hesitant at first because i'm like okay what does this mean for me yeah, of course my manager calls says uh look you know something happened i said i know i saw what are we going to do they want to know if you want to fight Brito. i said all right as long as it's for the title it doesn't make any sense for number one and number two to fight if it's not for a title Agreed. and uh for about two weeks i was basically training to fight julian lane and elvin i didn't know who i was going to be fighting i didn't know what was going to play out but uh, at the end of the day, they, they sent the contract out for Elvin. We signed the fight, and uh, now I'm fighting in my hometown for the title, just like Destiny intended. Well, that's what I was going to say. I feel like this is almost destiny for you. Uh, and, and honestly, I mean, with the loss to Elvin, did, that, did he ever leave your mind? Are you looking for redemption? I, I mean, where are you at with that? It's like I said the other day, uh, all of my opponents that I've lost to, Jim Allard, especially in BKFC, since this is my home sport now, Jim Allers, Harris Stevenson, you know, Elvin, uh, they've never left my mind. Um, when I when I don't have an opponent, one of those three guys are, are the p- face that I picture. Um, and it's no disrespect to them at, at all. You know, it's just that's the way I was born and raised. Uh, if, if I lose, I got to come back and, and rede- redeem course. myself. And uh, to be honest, in that fight against Elvin – I didn't fight. I didn't prepare to fight Elvin. I prepared to fight my previous fights. I prepared to fight, you know, a guy like Jim Allers, Mm -hmm. um, who's very aggressive, not very elusive. He's straightforward, comes to bang. And I was looking to counter a fighter like that. So you didn't really get to see the real Lionheart when you, when I fought Elvin, uh, there were brief moments, but it's just, I didn't fight the game plan. I was supposed to fight. So, uh, I look at this as a way of righting a wrong um, in my own story. I uh, I made the mistake, uh, and so which I'm glad for because that means I'm the one that can fix it. No, I agree, and I, I was actually going to bring that up about I don't feel like you're the same fighter. You've developed so much. Before, I feel like you went in just as a fighter. You weren't really, uh, like you said, you're fighting somebody else, not Elvin. This time, I feel like you're going as a skilled professional fighter. I, I No disrespect, but last time, I don't think you you would say it yourself. I would guess you weren't at the level you're at now as, as far as being a skilled professional. So I'm excited to see uh, where you're going to head next. Uh, would you say camp-wise, I know you said you've been preparing extra long. You're preparing for Julie, and then two weeks preparing for them both. Would you say you seem very happy? Is this the best fight camp you've ever had? Because Elvin was kind of saying that too. No? Yes? 100%. 100%. I've been having fun. Uh, Weight cut has not even been a thought that crossed my mind. Uh, Weight's just been dropping off of me. Um, I put a lot more running in this time. Uh, I started off running three miles on the road in like 27 minutes. And today on the treadmill, I hit 20 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, I, I feel fast. I feel strong. I feel prepared for no matter how Elvin decides to come out. Um, and like I said, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for the fight. I'm ready to put on a show for the Mississippi fight fans, uh, for Jackson. I'm, I'm ready to put on a show for BKFC and prove why I'm the 165 pound champ. And after that, you know, Everybody just needs to get in line because it's going to be a long time before I let go of them belts. <laughs> I love that. So this is uh, an exciting thing for you fighting as we debut in Jackson too. You're fighting there in your hometown. But when we look at this fight, Rob and I, I don't know if you heard, we were talking um, before we got on with you. We were trying to decide in our heads how we thought this fight might go just from spectators, from a fan standpoint. And we weren't sure. We really weren't sure. Of course, people want to knock out. People like that. But do you feel like this might go the distance again? I've tried not to think about how the fight's going to go. More or less, I've thought about what I'm willing, what I'm prepared to do in the fight. Um, If I can connect solid, I believe I can put him out. 
but Elvin's a tough dude. And I mean that with all the respect, um, you know, I'm coming in a lot more serious in this fight. It has nothing to do against Elvin. Um, it's just simply, we could be friends after the fight again, but for right now I've got a belt, I've got to win. And so I'm coming out there to put him on the floor, but if it goes to decision, I'm not going to leave it. I'm not going to, leave it like I did last time to where the judges had to flip a coin on who won. It's right. going to be 100% unanimous. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, uh, you should never leave it to the judges as we've talked about before, you know, you, you be your own finish of the match, but also, uh, you're the KO of the year winner. We've seen your power for knockouts and stuff. So, I mean, that, that could happen. And Rob and I were talking about that right before we came on mm-hmm. the air. I, I, we're excited to see how this fight's going to go, how it's going to end, how it's going to play out for you, for Elvin, for the fans, honestly. BKFC.com, if you want to get in, you can grab the app. It's BKFC Fight Night in Jackson coming up January 29th. Rob, do you have anything for our buddy Lionheart? Yeah, so you guys fought, you know, you didn't get the nod in your previous bout. What have you learned that you plan on incorporating in your championship bout that you think might give you an advantage? You know, you spoke about you don't want to leave it into the judge's you know, judges' hands again. What are you changing with your training or your approach to Elvin this time around? So with this fight, um, we've took things, I don't want to say more serious because we always take fights seriously, but we've kind of stepped up the level. Uh, we, I have guys specifically for sparring that spar like Elvin that watch his videos four or five times a day that train and train literally to fight like him to spar me, um, which I could not be more thankful for, uh, especially one of my brothers, uh, Josh Weems, um, because he's got an interim title fight coming up in March and he's still taking time to prepare to fight like Elvin for me and then get his rounds in. I've done a lot more studying. I've done a lot more Mm technical oriented training, not just cardio. I mean, I could be out here running up mountains and stuff like that, but instead I'm out here, I'm getting my miles in for my cardio and for my legs, but then I'm going and doing 10 rounds with a weighted vest on of boxing rounds strictly so that I can pick up my speed, pick up my power. Um, I'm improving just overall. And then from the last fight to this fight before I was, an aggressive brawler, more Viking style going in, you know, for the kill nonstop, not caring if I got hit, not caring if I shed blood this time around, I'm going to be a little bit more like a samurai. I'm, I'm looking for the killing blow, but I'm not willing to give up a killing blow to take, uh, to give one. Um, I'm looking at combining the styles of my old self and the new Caleb to, basically marry them together to be a very controlled violent person we're, we're looking forward to the new caleb and you spoke you sold a lot of tickets you're the hometown hero does that bring any added pressure to it any nervousness for the fight as a younger fighter it probably would have but uh you know when i was fighting mma i fought uh, just a couple hours away from home for a title against the number one guy in Mississippi. And uh, I had a lot of pressure on that fight. I was 3-0 and going in as a pro. And for some reason, I got this crazy thought in my head that if I lost, that was it. It was over with. And we're talking about a – I'm not disrespecting the promotion, but we're talking about a local amateur title. Yeah. I mean, not, not amateur, but local pro, pro title fight, you know. So – it's not like it was a world title, but I had so much pressure built on me that I woke up that morning and was like, you know what? If I lose, it's okay. You know, I'm still going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to go train. And uh, since then, I've been able to handle my wins and my losses a lot better. I've been able to handle pressure a lot better um, because at the end of the day, this is my life. Um, this is another step and I can't wait to have those belts, but regardless of the outcome, Monday morning, I'm still getting up and I'm going to the gym. I'm still going to be training. So if on the slightest small chance that I lost these titles, y'all are still going to see my name in the rankings. Y'all are still going to see me climbing up and I will just continue to go fight until I finally get those belts. 
but I'd rather not have to do all that. That sounds like a really tiring thing to do. I'd rather just go ahead and go win these belts and then just stop anybody else from taking them. Of course. Uh, I, I'm going to kind of reverse that question a little bit that Rob asked. It, it, you, he's talking about, does that added pressure? What about when you're walking out, you're the hometown boy and, and people are chanting or cheering for you. Does that enter your mind? Does that propel you to go the extra mile or you're just a fighter and you're like, you don't, you block, some guys just block that out. They don't even hear it. So there's two people. Okay. There's Caleb Harris and then there's Lionheart. Caleb Harris is the guy that will give his shirt off his back for anybody if i see somebody that's you know walking in the rain down the road i'll stop pick them up hey where are you going i can at least take you to a gas station get you out of the rain that type of person i'm constantly looking to help other people smile because i know what it's like dealing with depression and hard days that's the caleb harris that y'all see out in public mm -hmm. when i walk down that catwalk that guy gets left behind I ask God before every fight to take all the anxiety, all the depression, all the anger that I may deal with throughout my fight camp. And I ask him to put it in my hands and let me release it into the world. And when I step into the cage, I give no damn about anybody else and their feelings, except for me. I go out there and I fight. That is when I get to express myself in the most violent and creative way possible. And I get to be free. So I love hearing the crowd, but the second I step under them ropes and them cameras are on me, I don't see nobody but my opponent. What's, and until that opponent's either laying on the ground or my hand is raised, I don't hear anybody else. Well, that's the way it ought to be. That's a great answer. And I, I don't think any of your fans would have a problem with that either. That's what they want to see. That's what we want to see. And it's interesting to learn from you how the switch is flipped. Uh, you're saying you maybe in prayer and you go out there and you just kind of comment. I always wonder that because, again, there's guys like you that are the nicest people in the world. And then you go out there. Uh, Luis Palomino does, does the same thing. I, I'm like, how do you how do you flip that switch? And he always says his wife has to tell him the fight switch flipped. He doesn't even know it sometimes. Uh, he said sometimes a couple days before. So God bless you, man. That's awesome that you, uh, you're you able to switch like that and be such a good guy. If I'm ever stuck in the rain, I'm glad you'll pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, do we have anything else for the Lionheart? Uh, that's all I have, man. I'm looking forward to this fight. It's, it's exciting. Me too. I'm looking forward to it too. Uh, I know the fans are, all of us. BKFC.com, grab the app. You can do that to see BKFC Fight Night debut in Jackson, Mississippi, my main man's hometown here, against another main man that we have here, Elvin Brito. It's going to be an awesome fight, part two. We're all looking forward to it. I know you are as well, and I wish you the best of luck trying to bring that gold uh, over to your house, man. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you all for having me on. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you. There he goes, the Lionheart, man. Have it, man. It was, it was interesting to get into his head, and I, I always like to find out, that might be a building question in my interviews from now on, I always like to find out how guys like him mm -hmm. make that transition. You got a guy like Tiago Alves will say, I don't really make one. I'm just me. I've done so many fights since I'm 15. Mm -hmm. This is just my business. But then guys like him, or even a Joe Elmore, the nicest guy in the world, becomes an absolute animal. Do That's we have breaking news? Do we have breaking, have breaking news? Breaking news. I don't know, do uh, we? Rob's lunch has arrived. Oh, oh we got pizza. Oh, pizza party. P pizza pizza I get all for excited everybody. I hear breaking news. Now we get pizza. When Hi, we hear everybody. It. A slice of pizza that's watching right now. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. <laughs> oh, I'm Italian. I can't eat this. No. <laughs> my ancestors will kill me. We are not sponsored, sponsored by this delivery. <laughs> All right. You know, look, look, I'm going to say something. Look, and this is not, I'm Italian. I can say this. See this? Garlic, that's Italian cologne. I'll drink this. I love garlic. <laughs> Italian cologne. It is. Garlic is Italian cologne. This is for the 165-pound championship. It's a big deal, man. This is the biggest Inaugural. fight in BKFC, maybe in, in history for both of these guys. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. If you're the champion... And you win, you make more money. You lose, you're not making as a, as much money. And That's then you have the to, fight and then you have to climb up again. To, it's like a whole different climb now. You have to make not as exactly. much money, climb up again. You don't want to lose this fight. But I, I do believe. I'm so sorry, I'm cutting you off. Mm -hmm. I do believe that whoever loses comes out losing into this. They're both skilled enough fighters where we're going to see them again. It's not going to be the end for them. And I think they understand that. But I agree. This is a fight that can't be lost for either one of these guys. And look, both of these guys, Elvin kind of said it in his interview. I know I've talked to uh, Caleb about it before off the air. They are not just chasing money. They're chasing legacy. And what better way than to solidify your legacy is being the first champ in their division for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. These guys never are be forgotten. training their ass off. It's, the, You're going to see oh, polished yep. Yep. on both sides. Now, can Caleb make the changes necessary to come on, on uh, come 
be the winner on uh, on this bout. We're gonna see. Can he make those changes? Can he make the uh, and what changes switch? has Elvin made? Even though he won, I, you know he's exactly. gonna he's gonna make some changes. He said himself, he he's a different fighter now. Like I said, I had in my notes he was what one in what did I say? I don't even remember one in two or something when he the last fight. Now he's had a lot more under his one belt. One in three, and he had a three-fight win. Was he one in three? Yeah. I'm sorry. Now he's four and three. Regardless, yep, I think. My, my point I is, check my notes on he that. has. I'm sorry. Yeah, you might have screwed the me fans. up there. I don't know. It's easily done. They're probably yelling at us in the chat now. But my point is, this guy's had a lot more experience. They both had, and that's what excites me mm -hmm. because a lot of times you, you get excited for a bare knuckle debut, you know, and that's great. You should be. But it's always exciting to me to see after someone gets a couple fights under their belt and they figure this bare knuckle thing out a little more. Yeah. Now they become more dangerous. Now they become more skilled. Both of these guys have that. That's why uh, part two, usually with movies, you're like, ah, part two. Part two is going to be better than part one. Oh, Way better. Be amazing. Way man. better. Amazing. So, their camps, their training. Exciting fight. I, I want to go to Puerto Rico. I just don't want to wrestle goats. <laughs> I think that would hurt. I mean, have you seen that online, him wrestling goats and stuff? And like nah, putting... man, I didn't even know what you guys are talking so about. He, he had a goat. Like, what the he hell? had a goat, dude. I thought you were talking about his promotion. No. Because he's with goat. <laughs> no, I'm no. Like, that is kind of funny. I'm like, is this a... Uh, what's no, going on? No, he had a goat that he was headbutting mm -hmm. like against, and the goat had his back legs up against the wall, pushing him, and Elvis just pushing back. Like, the goat couldn't get any ground on him. I mean, he's wrestling goats and... It's crazy. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure it helps with your neck your muscles. Neck, right? The stronger your neck your is, neck, your head, everything. Yeah. You're, you're forcing it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's it's Puerto Rico. The training's different. And look, if Elvin Brito told me to wrestle a goat or headbutt a goat, and I was training for bare knuckle, I would do it. If he told me to hit myself in the head with a hammer, I'd do it. The guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> he does. I mean, you tell Absolutely. me to hit myself with a hammer, I don't do it. Nah, not at all. <laughs> yeah, I know you like to see it. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. I don't know uh, if the guys in the truck have a commercial lined up. We got a lot more to talk about. Oh, we're showing the goats. This is great. The goat. I'm sorry. This is the goat. So I still watch this, Rob. This is crazy. Oh, this is great. <laughs> I mean, and it's got to be leg strength too because he's pushing with his legs. You know, I'm sure it's not easy to do. Yeah, it deal. definitely helps. You know, it definitely helps. <laughs> I actually looked up because I'm such a nerd. I looked up how goats are able to ram into each other and um, without being knocked out. It's the, uh, the autonomy of their body and how it's shaped, really? and it's especially in the neck area. You know, because when you get knocked out, it's you know it's what your your brain swishes around inside your, yeah. your inside your skull, right? But if your neck is very strong and extremely stabilized, it just it takes that blow. I like how you thought yeah. of that looked up. All I thought when I saw that was the old school Mountain Dew commercial <laughs> where the guy rams a goat. Remember that? They oh, knocks him out. It knocks. The and goat I down. will tell you yeah. this: you talk about rams hitting each other. Mm -hmm. One time when I used to do professional wrestling, uh, something it, it's not set up, but if it were, it was a miscue, and we both. We're running at each other with our heads down, and you could hear it throughout the whole gym. I mean, it was it, it mm. hurt so bad. Ba boom! We I almost knocked myself out. Doesn't feel good. So it's good he's coming in prepared with the goat in Puerto Rico. And you know, there's a lot to be said about Elvin. He gets relaxation on the beach and stuff like that. He can get his mental clarity right. Mm -hmm. I would think in Puerto Rico it's beautiful. I do think because it's mental game too. It's not just toughness. Oh man, real fast. I'm gonna ask the chat. Is it the Rocky? Where you go train in the Siberian, <laughs> Rocky you know what I mean? The Siberian hardships and you're training in a barn and it's very gritty, you know, a la Apollo Creed and Clubber Lang yeah. and the toughness of the gym. Or is it the sunny beaches and, you know, the, I, I guess it depends on the I feel like he's got both now. in Puerto Rico. He's got that, that mm -hmm. rollness, that grit, mm -hmm. and he's got the beautiful beaches and stuff to kind of come back from it. And then there's other guys who just go to the gym and just work it out and sweat it out and then go to the like you're saying, dreary day out, you know. I think mental clarity for me, mm -hmm. if I was ever a fighter, I would like Puerto Rico. You're yeah. training with Elvin and you have beautiful atmosphere to, to kind of be around you to kind of clear your head. Because again, I think it's very mental. I do. I, I'd have to grind it out in the hardcore, man. Oh, of course I, you I would. I think, yeah, iron, iron sharpens iron, brother. You'd be I like, need to be around it. You'd be like Paulie. They better have my comics here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what are you doing to me, Rock? You're ruining my vacation. That's what you'd be like. So what I was saying before is I don't know if we have a commercial break set up, but I'd love to go to a quick commercial really quick, and then we'll come back, and we have more stuff to talk about, including the new fighter signing, undefeated mm -hmm. bare-knuckle fighter, and I believe we have so much more. But, you know, it's Ryan and, Brian and, Ryan and Rob. Wow. Brian and Rob. Rob and What's Brian. Ryan? <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Today's a rough one for me. I don't know why. It's cool. Anyway, let's go to commercial and we'll be right back after this with a lot more to talk about. You throw out the commercial. I'm going right. to let you do it. Good. Bam, baby. Let's go. One time.
Rifle Fighting Championship debuts in Jackson, Mississippi, Saturday, January 29th. Live from the Jackson Convention Complex, it's Elvin L. Bandito Brito versus Caleb Lionheart Harris to crown the inaugural Waller Weight Champion. Also see Alan Belcher attempt to dominate BKFC vet Bobo O'Bannon. Plus, Quentin Henry collides with Chris Sorrow. BKFC Fight Night Jackson, Saturday, January 29th. Live on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Download it now at BKFC.com. And we laugh, baby. we're back. All right, all right, we'll do it live. We'll do it live. All right, all right, we'll do it live. Oh, we're on? Are we on? Psychopath. That's, that's my, that's my, you've never so, seen that clip? You, yeah, well. You, why are you ignoring me? You've never seen that clip? What's that? What's that, Bill O'Reilly? <laughs> Did you ever see that clip? <laughs> do, it yeah, that's what I was I'll do it live. Do it live. Right now, do it live. Sucks. If you guys knew what goes on behind the scenes, yeah. here, you would understand frustrations and craziness. So <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the samurai sword for this one. I wrote the notes. Don't I even talk about no, it. Again. I dropped, I dropped a, a specific event with a specific fighters that didn't sign a specific contract yet. So. Uh, yeah, you you're gonna can take all a hate double, me You're going to take a double sword I'm gonna double now. double down on it. Yeah. No, you're going to take a double or triple because you keep bringing it up. I know. What are you we're doing? Probably, we're probably going to get a call from some uh, you know, some of the suits. I, I'm sure you will, <laughs> you nut. Anyway, this guy just lets... That's why they don't tell me it info. It was fun while it lasted, folks. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they don't tell me info because it bleeds out of my dumb yeah. mouth. You got to be careful that, with that's that. That's why I don't have an Instagram. I don't have a Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I barely you know, do Facebook. Ain't no, and when I do, <laughs> so. Ain't no celebration. All right, listen. So let's talk about the Jackson cards. So we just, we just had the main event on there. I mean, let's do it, man. The main event I'm is excited. great. The main event's phenomenal. But if you look at this card, I mean, you got the main event. You got Bobo versus Alan Belcher. Bobo Bannon, BKFC vet. We've seen him. He's tried. He's tough. He's tested. Taking on Alan Belcher. Now, Alan Belcher, his second time in BKFC. And I will say Alan Belcher looks absolutely phenomenal. Jacked, I've never seen man. him look better. Look at the abs. He is abs jacked. on abs. Hey, Rob, move your uh, ficus over so we can see so, Ultra. Yeah. My what? I don't know. Your plant. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Blocking the fighters. <laughs> I didn't set it up. All man. right, so uh, I think that that match, <laughs> some Shh. reconstruction. I think that that match is going to be good. That bout's going to be awesome. And when you look, at, when you look at that bout, uh, you got Alan Belcher, who mm -hmm. not only fought for us, but if you remember at our last show, he was cornering Hannah Guy, and Hannah Guy came out in the losing end. But I mean, I talked to her afterwards. She's like, I didn't lose that fight because mm -hmm. she did. She fought her heart out, um, and. I love that Alan Belcher, coming from the UFC and all, has integrated himself into the culture where now he's cornering fighters. So he's obviously mm -hmm. studying hard. I want to see what has changed for Alan Belcher in this fight because Bobo Bannon is no joke. He's a tough dude, man. So tough as nails, That's going to be great. The Bible Belt seen, Brawler. He posted some of his, his footage, and me and him... We we would train in the same area if I were a fighter. Who, Bobo? You know, Bobo trains. He, he says he doesn't have the luxury, but he has his house set up under his carport of where he trains Does at he? when he can get the training in. I love it. Hardcore. That's the type of guy, man. That's that's going to be a war. That's going to be it. a war. I'm a big fan of, of uh, Bobo and seeing what he's done with the organization. So that's going to be awesome. And then Quentin, your hero, my hero, our hero, Quentin the, the hero. hero, the hero in general, mm -hmm. the hero of uh, bare knuckle fighting championship taking on versus the villain. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, I feel like Sorrow I feel has like, that so personality. Man. I feel like he's he seems like he's cleaned his act up a little bit, and mm -hmm. he he try to be a better man. I mean, I don't think he's a bad guy, but he seems like he's gonna get tends to get underneath fighter skin, especially in weigh-ins, and I think that's part of the psychology. Me too. Now, will he try to do that with Quentin Henry? Does it affect Quentin Henry? I don't know. We'll see, man. Quentin, Quentin is an emotional dude. That guy Very. brings the fire and he brings the skill to it. And so, I look I look forward to that because Chris Sorrow, another another stud, man. I mean, you, this is great. Knockout power right there. I didn't dude. mean to cut you off. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Rob. This is this is great because you're looking at this card. I mean, I thought our Knuckle Mania card was great. And it still is. But this is the card before Knuckle Mania. This thing's loaded. And if you move on from Chris Sorrow and Quentin Henry, which is going to be a great fight to watch. I'm excited they're both coming back. You look down to Scott O'Shaughnessy and Jared Warren. Now, this is interesting for so many reasons. One, both great fighters. I'm fans mm -hmm. of both. But something we haven't promoted or talked about, my wife actually said this to me. I'm going to give her credit when she's looking at the card. She goes, hey, isn't one of them a firefighter and one a policeman? So firefighter versus policeman here in their real uh, life. Correction, I made an Instagram post saying uh -oh. SWAT versus firefighter. SWAT, so. sorry, it's SWAT. Yeah. I'm it, sorry. Yeah, it, no, it no. It has been promoted. 
<laughs> so which one's wrong? <laughs> oh, I, th I thought you were saying correctional. I'm just saying police officer. SWAT versus firefighter. SWAT, Scott O'Shaughnessy, well, firefighter. SWAT Jared is Warren. part of the police. Out. I was just down he's in, correcting. Uh, he's correcting. Nobody said it. I'm trying to give my wife credit, Evan. That's all. All right. Well, I was just in Florida shooting um, Martin Brown. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. Jared Warren trains in that gym. And he looks good. Yeah. He was cracking pads. Yeah. That's oh, Jared's at that gym. I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, Jared Warren and uh, Terry Janowski. I knew well. Terry was, yeah. yeah. So Jared Warren, I mean, he always looks good. If he's looking even better than he normally looks. Oh, Paul, uh, let me pause really fast. I'm going to pause the next. I, I, I love what I just heard. What, that they're trained together? Three years ago, you could not find yep. a gym. Teach me bare knuckle. You could not find a fighter at the gym. Yep. I mean, you're going to find that guy that, yeah, I've been in street fights. You now have camps. You now have gyms. You now have opportunities to learn this sport. It's brand awesome, new. Is it? If you want to get into professional fighting, we get the message in. We get the applications all the time. Find a local gym. There are gyms across this country where people are training. Dude, get I, in there. You're right. I can tell you right now, off the top of just off the top of my head, ATT. Uh, mm -hmm. That's gonna be a hard one for you to get into, but they have a bare knuckle little thing going there. Yep. Uh, you look at Slaughterhouse. Yep. That's where Jared Grant's out of and Fame's out of. They have some stuff going on there. You look at uh, I think it's Shift. Uh, where where um, Martin Brown is training, mm -hmm. we just talked about. Yep. The, the, all these different places we go for interviews, we're seeing that more and more and more. It's it's become th this tighter, even tighter knit community. So if you're trying to get in, start your own bare knuckle thing at the gym or something. I don't know what to tell you, but nah, it's awesome. it's, it is cool to see that. It's like teams of fighters going together. But Scott O'Shaughnessy, Jared Warren, I'm really looking forward to that fight. I think Scott has shown a lot to us. And Jared, the last time he fought, I believe it was, was it Zion? When he, when he knocked him out like boom it was a brutal knockout. yeah jared jared's a guy that uh he's another driven guy but so scott everyone's driven mm -hmm. on this card every fighter's driven we talk about that's why it's so hard to predict outcomes but i'm looking forward to the fight who's your uh sleeper fight of the night uh that's got it for me uh let me look i'd say either mine. Audra cummings versus Pittman. i think that would be fun to watch i think scott o'shaughnessy i don't know if it's a sleeper versus jared warren that's just one no. i'm really looking the forward one to. you Eric? guys need to look out for is teddy webster robert morrow teddy webster went to a mm -hmm. um a draw against Frank Tate at Total yes, he Line did. 1. Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. That guy that can bang. Dude. Yeah, they are. I'm really looking forward to seeing Teddy Webster in, in Bare Knuckle. For I sure. forgot about that fight was awesome. I, and here it is. I, my sleeper fight. My sleeper fight of the night. Look, he had a sleeper fight all yeah, set up. Yeah, and he was, was going to it. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I want to say real quick, Rob. Mm -hmm. I watched that fight from home. Uh, I remember watching that fight. Evan's a thousand percent correct. If you've never seen that fight, go find it on the BKFC app because it is a banger, dude. It was awesome. David Diaz, Albert Inklin. I David Diaz, that Such guy, passion. man. Such passion. He has so much energy. He's been training. You know, he was training with the who's who. Britton Beltran, Joey Beltran, yep. that whole camp. La Familia. Expect, expect a war. I think if that's the first fight in the night, wow, well, it, it doesn't get any better than that. Well, that's, have you, that's have you seen what he looks like? Fight. Have you seen what he looks like now? No. Oh my no. God, how much weight does he lost? He looks. Well, David Diaz has been training in. Uh, yeah, he moved. In, so he moved camps Puerto now. Valerica. Okay. Yeah, he's down in. He's in Mexico. But his um, weight loss is phenomenal. Yeah, he, looks, he great. looks great. But he hasn't been training um, in Miami anymore, so he's kind of been doing his own thing. We um have an interview. Oh, here's some fight footage while I talk. Thank uh, you. We just posted an interview he did with Shawnee Mack on Instagram. Go listen to it. It's 20 minutes. He talks about like w the area he's training in. He said they're finding like, there's like dead bodies down the road and stuff. It's like crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, David Diaz is awesome. Yeah, I'm a big fan of his too. And I don't know who David Shawnee Mack is. Little, I know, you know the OG Shawnee Mack though. I don't know Shawnee Mack. He, he was rolling <laughs> his first fight. I, I think he was polished, you know, polished with his, you know, his training. He polished up a little bit. His weight cuts down. His cardio is up. Expect that to be an amazing fight, especially if that's the kickoff of this, of this oh, card. Oh, yeah, dude. I don't know which way we're going, but as we continue to look, I mean, you can go through this card, and you can see that's going to be a good fight. You can see that, look, I don't want to I don't want to down his opponent. His opponent, mm -hmm. Albert, is amazing too. But I know more about David Davide. I can't say mm -hmm. it right, Diaz. David Diaz, this guy... If you look at his career and where he was so thankful to get that first shot, and this is a guy that has heart. He worked really hard in the last year or so uh, to get himself in the best shape of his life. He looks awesome. We're looking forward to that fight for so many reasons. Uh, and if you continue to look at the card, I mean, we Mate. talked about Pittman, Aldra Cummings. That, that's going to be a good fight. We know, I've been waiting for Aldra Cummings to keep going to make a debut, and then it doesn't happen. Now, what do you know about Wade? Wade Johnson versus Nathan Mitchell. Nathan Mitchell looks very familiar. Wade Johnson. Nathan Mitchell fought Tom Schof yep. in Alabama. That's that. That's right. So, you like a roll of decks of info there, Evan. Thank you. Nathan Mitchell. I mean, talk about tough hill to climb. Your first. Uh, well, I'm, I'm 
Correct me if I'm wrong. That was his first BKFC opponent, correct? Tom Show. Yeah, that was a debut. Yeah. So you put you put him in with a lion. It's battle tested, so, man. He's coming back. Yeah, exactly. Learned a lot, I'm sure. Wade Johnson. I don't know that much about him. I'm not going to lie. But what Nathan Mitchell show going up against Shof? Shof. War Shof. Exactly. I wouldn't want that to be my <laughs> first fight. I'll tell you that. Uh, let's move on to Jocelyn Jones versus Martina Kroll. Uh, that's a fight I'm looking forward to. Jocelyn Jones, of course, out of UFC. Mm-hmm. We had spoken her. I don't think we had her. Did we have her on the air? But we talked to her off the air. We did. She's very excited to be here. She's very excited to uh, show her wares, so to speak, show what Making she can her do. Debut. And I'm excited for her debut there. And look, dude, Martinez, no slouch to make a debut against. I mean, She's, she was announced another fighter. Unfortunately, with COVID, pushed a lot of the cards around, a lot of the fighters that were international, even you know here in the States, just getting people across state lines sometimes yeah. was difficult with COVID. If you guys don't know who Martina Kroll is, she is uh, Muay Thai and K1. She's mm-hmm. got yeah, like she's no 45 joke. fights. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. No, we, she's no slouch. I remember we, we announced her probably close to a year ago, almost a year ago that we signed her. I've been waiting like, for her. her. Yeah. Her resume looked sharp. So this but, is a great... You know, you have Jocelyn coming from the UFC. She fought some of the her best Her resume's sharp, world. right? Exactly. And these are the free limbs. These are the ones you can see for free, I believe, right? That's going to be... Man, this is going to be... You can see right here. So card. they're going to be the ones that just to get the, the, the... Both these matches to get the night kicked off. That you couldn't pick a better kickoff. I, I wish think. we could animate this so we could go through and circle who we think. Like, you know, they do on those big, like, Fortune well, we 5 can, look, companies well, here, where you can on. circle it with a pen. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm oh, sorry no 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 yeah maybe we can do that we'll look at that in the future but we're excited for the card january 29th mm-hmm. it's gonna uh, be of course the main start. card starts at 8 p.m as it says up there bkfc.com but you want to get tuned in before that I, I know that um it's just a fan I, I don't want this card to get smashed by knuckle mania too what i mean is it, this card is very important to us right Absolutely. so i don't want i don't want anybody thinking they can look oh i'll catch knuckle mania too you know that goes with the bigger cards mm-hmm. you don't miss this card this card this has like this is a huge card i think it's a big fight for henry sorrow too i i th- chris sorrow look, he's I mean, training down in fifth street now with palomino um, that's another bare knuckle a, gym I think yeah we're gonna see a totally different chris sorrow you got everybody down there. Chris Sorrow's down there. You got Luis down there. You got uh, J- Jade Mus. I can't say her name right. It's like French. Jade M- Monson Wong. I can't say it right. Uh, <laughs> I-, I really butchered that. Uh, but you you have them down there. And and mm-hmm. Luis was kind of telling us these guys are just crushing it down there. I think Gustavo's down there. I believe too. Maybe. Yep. And 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 these guys, like we say, iron sharpens iron. So if you've seen, that's a good point. If you've seen Sorrow fight. Uh, as everyone was saying, he might come back a better fighter just because he's the world famous Dino's Fifth Street training with some of the who's who of bare knuckle. I mean, it's cool because as we see the sport develop, to touch on what everyone was saying, as we see the sport develop, we, we see, we said it earlier, we see different styles emerge, but we also see people that were pretty good fighters or really good fighters become even better fighters because mm-hmm. iron sharpens iron. And you're going to see more of that. You're going to see someone who you thought, oh, Chris Sorrow, I liked him. He was fun. Then you're going to see him fight and you'll be like, whoa, different guy now. All that right, happens chat, with a lot of people. Here we go, chat. Make it known to us next week, which two fighters do you want on the show? Drop it in the comments. Let us know. When the show ends, drop it in the comments so we know which two fighters you would like us to interview next we're week. We're going to be in Jackson. Yeah, next we're going to be in, uh, in Jackson. Don't forget that, buddy. No, I know, live. Oh, we're gonna, That's oh, what I mean. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a okay. Yeah. okay, well, you got to we'll be specific. There. They might say someone's not on this card. Mm. Fighters from this card you'd like to see us talk exactly. to, right? Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Well, we're going to try to talk to everybody and... At least get Not you know you, some content. You be quiet. <laughs> I'm just saying we want to content. You know, we want to share everybody's story as much as we can. So I'll, 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 I'll talk to as many people as we can. Dude, no favorites. No, we don't play favorites. That, that's something. Yeah, I'm not playing favorites. favorites. I'm, ask, I'm asking. I'm asking what audience. the chat wants. The yeah. chat wants All what right, the chat gets. Enough. They he, dictate the show. There's I mean, one last thing I want to dictator back there. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> for, for, uh, Supreme Fauci. <laughs> Whoa! Don't compare me to him. Whoa, here we go down this road. All right, settle down, kid. Show. Bobo, put your mask on. Let's go. Bobo's trainer, how mm-hmm. he talks to him in his corner, just with headphones. He's some guy. Is he even, still doing that? I think he is, and he's been winning ever since he has had that trainer. Like that's his. his I didn't know he was still weapon. doing that. That's awesome. It's a totally cool thing. Yeah. Do you want so, to talk to them about that? Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean. Uh, uh, they, we, they, yeah, they did. We, they did talk about it, and then when I say they, excuse me, I want to say. Um, Sean Wheelock, Chris, Chris Lytle were Lytle. discussing how Seven original and different it is when the last Bobo fight that he actually puts a headset on and his trainers overseas. It's incredible. Yeah, that's. that's I don't think different. it's ever. I've never seen that done. Have you? No. I mean, Evan, you've been shooting fighting for a long time. You've never seen that done either, right? Uh, no. 
I just think it's incredible that they're able to do that. Mm-hmm. And, and like with the guy not being there, and if I'm getting punched in the head, this is why I'm not a pro fighter. If I'm getting mm-hmm. punched in the head, I can barely pay attention to what the guy in front of me is telling me to do who's live. Yeah. Now I'm on like, a, God forbid the cell, the cell service is banned in the arena. What's sure. he going to do then, man? I know. You I know, know that's but tough. It, it's, it's very, uh, it's, but it's, maybe he gets a different vantage point, a different angle. He can see watch more of the fight. Yeah, he can meet, see more of the fight and he can have a more subjective view, right? If you're there, you're going to be emotional. Yep. Maybe be a little bit more emotional than you should be and you should be more analytical um but hey it's working plus so a lot of times keep doing what you're doing coming to a live show is amazing for anywhere especially mm-hmm. bkfc but like you're saying you have a different vantage point when you're on television and you're you're i mean the production the director they're amazing you're catching the best angles mm-hmm. so you're seeing the fight like you said a little differently and you might see shots that you might not have picked up being in the corner there sure so i think that's important too uh i mean we'll see what happens I, I just hope that, uh, I think I said, I hope the cell service there is good. We're looking forward to it. January 29th. That's coming up. Uh, that's like, wow, that's pretty much a week away. No. Wow. wow. It's right here, dude. And then full speed heading to knuckle mania too. We are cooking with hot grease, dude. I love it. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about, uh, <laughs> you like that <laughs> cooking with hot grease. Let's talk about, uh, uh, fight night, New York too. That's important. Before we talk about the new bare knuckle fighter that's undefeated, we signed uh, fight night, New York. Salamanca? Am I Salamanca. saying that? Salamanca. Salamanca. It's a Seneca, Salamanca, Seneca mm-hmm. Casino. So um, last time we were in New York. Did you know? What? Did Uh-oh. you know? What do I have? Half of the tickets are already sold out for that event. Well, I, yeah, it was barely announced and boom, they're flying. That's what seems to happen now at BKFC, which makes me proud of that. Yeah. As get it's your been working man. here. If, if you see the tickets go live, get your tickets. Get the best tickets possible. I'll say this. Last time we were in New York, mm-hmm. what a great event. The crowd was unhinged. The crowd was amazing. Uh, it was a great room. We were in a great area for the casino and not a bad vantage point in that room. Mm-hmm. And I find that I love doing arenas and stuff, but I find if we do a casino or something where it's not a high ceiling, major crazy arena, it's more intimate. It's the fights feel better. It's more intense. There's the crowds louder and it gets me up and I'm not even fighting. I just get excited to watch, you yeah, know? Yeah. So I will say the crowd in New York loves us excited to go back there. Get your tickets now. Uh, I don't know of any events we've signed on that yet. Do you Rob? All right, I'm I'm getting some of the questions right now uh, from Rockerland. When are you guys coming to L.A.? Please, I'm dying. L.A. I'll write to your senator. Yeah, we'll start writing to your senators. Yeah. I agree. Help right. us. Email. <laughs> <laughs> Rock the vote. Now, we're uh, doing our best to try to open up as many states as possible. Some are a little bit more challenging than others, but every day grinding away, trying to open up each and every state. So It's exciting for us when we do that. I mean, like when we hear there's a new state in the office, we get legit, legitimately, we're not jumping around like hugging and stuff, but like I high five Rob when I hear, I get excited. <laughs> we have a secret handshake we do. It's huge. Um, and we're excited to come to any market. Mm-hmm. And I love going back to a market like New York where they were so hot and excited. Even after the fight, you walk through the casino and people are still talking about it's it. It's always buzzing. People, yeah, dude, electric, it's such a yeah. cool feeling. It's all in that one mm-hmm. area. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we have some great fights on the docket for that. We can't release them yet, but uh, once the contracts get signed, we're going to keep you up to date. You can always follow us on uh, Bare Knuckle FC, of course, on the socials. So we're looking forward to that, right, I'm Rob? looking forward to that. Yes, we are. And we're also looking forward to announcing our latest bare knuckle signing mm-hmm. undefeated and we'll do that right after you ready this
Jackal Fighting Championship debuts in Jackson, Mississippi, Saturday, January 29th. Live from the Jackson Convention Complex, it's Elvin L. Bandito Brito versus Caleb Lionheart Harris to crown the inaugural Wallerweight Champion. Also see Alan Belcher attempt to dominate BKFC vet Bobo O'Bannon. Plus, Quentin Henry collides with Chris Sorrow. BKFC Fight Night Jackson, Saturday, January 29th. Live on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Download it now at BKFC.com. We're back yet again, mm -hmm. and we're talking about a lot of great stuff today. Before we get to our, our, our announcement of our undefeated Bare Knuckle Fighter we signed, I want to remind you we talked about Knuckle Mania 2 or Knuckle Mania 2. So it's going to be exciting. Biggest event of the year uh, for us. We always look forward to it. Stacked card. You know the card by now if you're watching. Mm -hmm. Mike Perry, Julian Lane, the main event. We'll start there. Separate security for those guys, oh, man. That's going to be nuts. <laughs> we have to keep them far away. That's and, be nuts. and then you got you got Luis Palomino uh, taking on Martin Brown, who just, who just uh, the won strap. the chance to get in there for the strap. I know. You also have the first ever women's title uh you got christine faria a lot of people say she's the most feared fighter in bkfc, in bkfc in bare knuckle uh and she's taken on a woman who has been on fire over the last year britain beltron you mm -hmm. knew her as britain hart she's now britain beltron uh that's gonna be a great fight and chad the money 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 baby money 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 yeah. mendez he's gonna be taking on fames who Making has had, had a couple a couple fights already in bkfc so these are mm -hmm. those just the top that's it, the money. I love it. That's just the top. That's just the top of the card. We'll get into yeah, more of that in another time. But tickets <laughs> crazy. on sale, Hollywood, Florida, Hard Rock, and they are moving quick. So if you want to get there live, bkfc.com, follow that link to the tickets. I just want to mm -hmm. let you know, because this isn't me showing the product. They're moving fast. I think we have more than half of it sold out already. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. Yeah, that's crazy. I love it. I love it. It's going to be such a fun time. So from there, we carry on to our next announcement. We've been talking about this since the beginning of the show. Uh, we have a new bare knuckle fighter making his debut in bare knuckle fighting championship. Got the big drum roll. Nice. We'd like to welcome to the organization, Jomi Escoboza. Big shout out to Jomi. Congratulations, Jomi Escoboza, Knuckle Mania 2, taking on Zion Tomlinson. Zion has been waiting for a fight for a long time. I know a lot about Zion. He's been fighting for us for a while. I believe he's the youngest fighter on our card. Uh, that we have on our on our whole entire organization. He's a guy that's driven. He's a guy that wants these fights, that gets excited for these fights. Jomi Escoboza, I mean, I, I've heard his name. I know a little bit about him. I know he comes from a regional bare knuckle uh, federation, and I'm looking forward to see what he can do as he comes up with BKFC, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, because this guy is made for us. Like, he's finally kind of graduated now. I was going to say, he fought in the other leagues. Now, wel welcome to the big leagues. Yeah, so now we're going to see, like WCW said, exactly. where the big boys play. We don't play, we fight. So let's see where it goes. In the biggest event of his, you know, of his his career, fighting Zion. Zion I mean, loves a good fight. Zion's does, always man. That guy's a dude. He's a warrior. That, he is, you know, I've seen him he conditioning his hands, conditioning his knuckles, talking about his training, calling people out. Calling everybody yeah, out. He yeah, loves I mean, f the only father and son duo in combat sports that I'm aware of. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Zion is a guy that always comes to fight. Like we said, he's tough as nails. So that's going to be a good fight for Jomi uh, for his debut. And look, that's jo a tough debut, man. That's I know, not like we're getting no, him no, but an see, O and O. But fighter. that's why I like it because it's on a, the biggest card of the year. Exactly, he makes his debut on the biggest card of the year. Uh, Jomi, I don't know a lot. I can't wait to mm -hmm. kind of talk to him and learn more about him as we as we just signed him. But I would think that with his little bit of experience he has coming in, he's going to be Six dangerous. And yeah, well, that's not little, but it's a lot of experience. Six and zero. But again, th there's different it's leagues. Not, like yeah. if you look at bare knuckle, let's say in England, right? A lot of these English guys will come over, and they don't always fare as well. The rules are a little different and stuff, but it's it's different everywhere. Even mm -hmm. even in different um, organizations where they fight in different structures, it's going to be different. Everything's different. So I'm looking to see how Jomi can uh, kind of uh, switch up his game plan a little bit, or if he decides to. And, and mm -hmm. I'm excited to have him on the roster. Jomi, welcome to BKFC. We, we love that you're here, and we're going to do some uh, fun business hopefully together. But first, get through this fight with Zion, and he's not an easy customer. He's really not. not. So Knuckle Mania 2, it's all happening uh, February 19th. BKFC.com to get in. But before that, we have one stop on the road. You like this? Mm -hmm. The road to Knuckle Mania? Yeah. Kind of hard there. On the road to Knuckle Mania, we have one stop coming up in um, Mississippi. Jackson, our debut, BKFC Fight Night. All this available, BKFC.com. Grab it on the app. Uh, again, Jomi Escoboza, welcome to BKFC. We're excited to see what you have to do. And uh, that's pretty much all I have today. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I know. My brain's tired. So, Rob, without further ado, I mean, I guess we'll, I, was waiting, see, I was waiting for the music. They always usually play us out. Thank you for hanging what out do today. play us out? <laughs> it's like when we're on the Grammys and we keep talking. They say, get off stage. It's the music that means we have to go. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate you, and we can't wait to see you next week live 
from Jackson, our debut, baby, on the road to Knuckle Mania 2. It's here. So we say cheers. Till next week, knuckle up. Like, comment, subscribe.